Hey team, well, it's nearly the end of October, which means I'm late. It's woodworkers fighting cancer time, and uh, Halloween is the deadline for project submission. I definitely don't want to uh, miss out on this, so we're deep in the throes of building this year's project, which is a dog food stand. Love the project. It's a great, clean design. It's an easy build, and if you're doing it for your pets, no problem at all scaling it up and down uh, height or size of the bowl to fit the dogs that you have. In my case, our dogs are already uh, fully stocked when it comes to eating apparati, so I'm going to build this project and I'm going to donate it to the local animal shelter. And that means, nay no telling uh, what size dog might be using it. Uh, not much you can do about the bowls. Once you cut the hole, that's the size bowl that fits in there. But the legs, we can make adjustable. Still have a lot of this air-dried pine laying around, and since I won't be the one maintaining the finish on this project years to come, we're going to go, for the most part, with uh, paint. I got the top and the rails milled. I'm going to glue this panel up so that it can dry, and then go back to milling work on the leg stock. The stock is nice and flat, so I didn't need any biscuits or dowels or dominoes to line it up and keep the joint flat. I did stick some clamps right on the edges of the seam just to make triple sure, and as it turns out, it didn't matter anyway because I changed my mind about the entire top later. Twelve of these strips required to make up the leg blanks, but they're small enough pieces that I'm able to use up some of my uh, B-team stock to get them all. Well, I'm short a couple of milling operations. These boards are... S3S, I guess, two faces and uh, one edge, which is face down on the bench. And that's because once these get glued up into leg blanks, I'm going to have to size the blank as a complete product. So there is absolutely no value in cutting them to width just yet. These rapid action clamps don't grip as tightly as a, a good threaded one, but it's enough pressure for the middle of the leg and it has a much wider jaw, kind of spreads out the clamping force as it were. With the leg blanks in clamps, it can turn my attention back to the stock for the rails that go around the base of the top. These things are some width, whatever the stock would allow. It's one of the nice things about this project is that there are very few dimensions which are critical. Tilting the saw blade to make miters to hold these frames together. One piece gets marked and cut to a specific length. The other piece gets cut to the same length as the first piece using a stop block. As with most miters, getting the opposing pieces exactly the same length is a lot more important than exactly what that length is. Glue in a band clamp is more than enough to hold this frame together. Each one of those corners is ultimately going to get a serious reinforcement when the legs are attached to the base. You do want a band clamp pretty tight since you're clamping four joints with one clamp. And sometimes these things will slip, especially when they're full of wet glue. So run around and make sure that all your corners line up and are nice and flush. Glue's dry on the leg blank, so let's get them milled up. And then we can start marking out for the taper, which is a little bit strange since these legs are not square, but it's not that difficult if you pay attention to it. The leg tapers are roughed out on the bandsaw. The big, wide blade and good tension helps make this pretty easy to cut straight. But no matter what you do, you're going to be left with a rough surface that either requires sanding or, in my case, a hand plane to get it baby's butt smooth and totally flat. The adjustable portion of this leg comes from a metal tube that slides in and out of the wooden leg. I drilled as far as I could on the drill press to get started perfectly straight, and then I had to finish it up with a hand drill. So I leveled the piece in the vise and then referenced the bubble level in the drill to make sure that this big old long ugly spade bit kept going straight. I opted for a 45 degree chamfer and a pretty good sized one on the bottom edge of all four of these rail sections. I originally had a roundover bit chucked in there, but all the metal in this project is giving it a sort of a modern industrial feel and I thought the sharper angle would just work better. Last major operation on the legs is to inset the mounting faces. I'm using the dado stack on the table saw for that. The critical dimension here is how far down the leg I go, so I'm using the stop block to make the very first cut. Then I can swing the stop block up and out of the way to nibble away the rest of the material. I adjusted the depth of the dado so the faces of the leg line up with the edge of the chamfer. And that little gap gets fixed with a chisel or covered with paint, your choice. And finally the legs get little 45 degree chamfers to knock off all those sharp corners. I ended up deciding that the stability and believe it or not the look of plywood were better suited for this project than the pine, so I cut myself a new top. 
I too am using the router to cut the holes for the food bowls. One complication I had, the diameter I need is just exactly underneath the handle of the plunge router. So off it came so I could drive in the pivot screw. The screw goes all the way through the workpiece and into a sacrificial piece so that it keeps the center section from becoming a missile once it breaks loose. I took three passes to cut the whole way through. I probably could have done it in two, but the dust builds up in the groove and it tends to burn even with an upcut bit. So there's only two big holes to do. Might as well take my time and do it right. After plunging all the way down to the sacrificial piece, taking out that one screw frees both the router and the cutout. There are a few roundovers on this project. Both top and bottom of the dog food bowls get it, as well as the bottom edge of the top board. The top edge of the bowl board has the same 45 degree chamfer as the rail. I did the bottom of the legs too, but honestly that probably would have been easier with sandpaper. All right, I gave all of this stuff an initial sanding to 120 grit, hosed it down with water, and then sanded it back to 120 yet again. That's gonna be more than good enough for paint. Uh, I numbered <laughs> these legs uh, because obviously they're cut with a specific geometry, one leg, one corner, and uh, you don't wanna find out you've got one in the wrong place when you start gluing. If you'd rather have these legs be detachable, they absolutely could be put on here with screws through the front and through the side. Uh, there's more than enough meat here, and I mean, it's a dog food stand. It doesn't have to hold up your car. Since we're painting, feel free to wipe up any excess glue. It's not gonna interfere with your finish, um, especially if you're about to glue the project to the bench. You know you're a nerd woodworker when four legs that don't rock on the flat bench without you trimming them makes you giggle. Cans of Rust-Oleum are the fastest way I know to get a lot of coats of a very durable finish on something that's a weird shape like this. But the top just gets clear. Lots and lots of coats of an oil-based clear poly. I like the color contrast between this and the black, and I also think the plywood layers actually look good in a project like this. The steel for the legs doesn't get any fancy treatment either. Cut off with a grinding wheel and then, well, ground. It's got a lot of sharp edges when you're done with this part of the operation. You could just as easily do this part of it with a hacksaw and sandpaper if you don't have a bunch of metalworking tools laying around. I should have made the recesses for the leg lock nuts before I glued the whole base together, but fortunately there's still enough room to get in here. There's a 5 16 pocket drilled with a Forstner and then a 3 8 drilled all the way through. This lets me epoxy in a 3 8 by 16 thread nut. Nothing special here. This is good old fashioned JB Weld. It is the gel formula because I'm trying to keep the epoxy out of the screw hole. After the epoxy cures, you can thread in a thumb screw, a bolt, a handle, whatever you want. Slip the steel rod down inside there, tighten it down, and that leg's not going anywhere. And now for the acid test. Will the dog use it? Well, there's dog number one. Let's make it taller and see if it works for dog number two. Badly. Two for two. All right, I know I went kind of off the reservation when it comes to the plans for this year's project. Sorry about that, but I think this is gonna work out better for uh, the folks who are gonna end up with it, and it sure was a heck of a lot of fun. Big shout out to Mark and Nicole. Thank you so much for putting this event on. It is a pleasure and an honor to be able to participate. Good job. Bentley likes it too. <laughs>